Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. I'm Humble and we're back on the Blue Unicorn Rebuild Project. Uh, as I've said before, things are moving fast and getting faster every day. Um, we are on day four of a Build Thrash weekend. Uh, started on Thursday, now it's Sunday. And uh, since this is final assembly, most of the hard work is already done. And it's just putting things together, A to B, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, let me show you the progress we've made so far and uh, what's kind of up next on the roster. So starting with the interior, not a whole lot has changed except we have the uh, fire bottle mounted. Um, uh, for those who have commented, yes, there was a fire bottle and a fire system in the car previously, and it did get pulled, which is why... Uh, there was some corrosion and mess uh, in the engine bay. Uh, it was enough to get me out of the car, and that's all it really needs to do. Um, it's a plus if it puts out the fire, but the number one importance is the protection and safety of the driver and passenger. That's about it for the interior. Uh, it still has... Um, I still have to put the HVAC system kind of up and in place, but... Uh, oh, and the belts are done now. It's basically ready for seats, but the seats are the last thing to go in um, just because it makes working in the interior that much harder. So uh, those will be the last addition to the interior. Um, moving on to our engine bay. As you can see, uh, the engine is in. This is in for the last time. Um, we have our oil tank and all the oil lines and oil cooler done and mounted. Um, all the lines that run through the engine bay are covered with this uh, DEI fire sleeve, both for uh, uh, heat and, and flame protection. This is for all of the oil and fuel lines are coated with this stuff uh, in the hopes that it helps keep more heat out of uh, those systems. So less heat into the oil and less heat into the fuel lines. Over on the front here, uh, the bundle of lines there in front of the engine. Uh, everything will fit, but it is very tight quarters. And then again, with our spin trick and the first oil cooler. So th the way the oil system is configured is oil comes um, out of the engine and into the spin trick where the oil and air are separated from the lines. Uh, air goes up to the top of the oil tank over there. The oil coming out of the spin trick goes through the oil to water heat exchanger, which is a MoCal unit right below it. From there, it comes through this line, which goes to our oil thermostat. And I've said previously, um, I've only had the, uh, the MoCal unit before and it was fine uh, basically nine out of 10 times. Um, it was just on really hot days that I needed an additional cooler, and that's what this is. This is the um, factory uh, MoCal oil cooler, oil to air. Uh, oil will come into the thermostat. <clears throat> if it's hotter than a certain temperature, uh, it'll go through the thermostat, through the cooler, and then back out to the tank. If the oil is still too cool what happens is, is the oil will come into the thermostat and then go right back out to the tank and bypass the cooler we have the beautiful rps clutch installed and ready uh, to accept the transmission and then taking a step back you can see just how wide and low the car sits uh, with some weight on it finally. So job still to do is uh, have to hook up our radiator hoses, which you can still see are loose. Uh, have to, of course, put on our intake and stuff like that on the motor and run our fuel lines. Um, I actually have to hook up our gas filler lines or our filler necks, which come from the top of the tank here and kind of make an S-bend up to the filler plates. I still have to run uh, oil filter lines from the bottom of the engine uh, to wherever I'm going to put the uh, uh, oil filter uh, and then of course get the transmission in and once all those systems are closed up uh, we'll be ready to fire the engine and that's sort of the plan for today. So uh, short uh, short list of to-do items uh, a couple of big ones but 
Uh, if ev everything goes well, uh, hopefully we'll hear this engine fire uh, for the first time. So let's get to it. And I have to apologize. I, it has been a thrash. Just an all-out, knockdown, drag-out thrash to get this car to this point. Um, by the time you see this, it'll be well past, but today is dino day. And I just wanted to kind of put something on video before all the events start breaking down and either succeed or fail or uh, whatever happens after this. Uh, I'll show you some uh, uh, progress that we've made and some of the struggles that we had, which is why I stopped filming uh and um kind of catch you up on everything that's happened so there she is on the ground on her own weight center tubs done side pods are in uh doors are in the interior is basically done uh still got to mount the passenger seat but otherwise it's set still got uh, actually a couple interior bits to go but for the most part it's ready for uh glass um, I still need to tidy up everything up here. I'm moving on to the back of the car. Uh, there she is complete. Now, well, mostly complete, I should say. Uh, on to some of the fun and disasters, trials and tribulations we've had over the past six days. In one of the previous videos, I showed you this nice triple plate clutch from RPS. Unfortunately, we could not get this in the car successfully. We tried for three days, had the transmission in and out of the car uh, about a half dozen times. And through my mistakes and through just fatigue, uh, one thing after another, we just, we could get it through two plates, but we could never get uh, the input shaft for the transmission through the third plate on the clutch uh, So just to move forward because dino day was looming we put the old clutch in the car We just had to we had to get past that So for now, I'm on the old single plate Which is the thrust bearing killer uh, just to get us through dino day get us through uh, the hypercar event and then it can come back and we can pull the transmission out and uh, try again uh, at a more relaxed pace. <sighs> the oil stain. So there's two lines down here that you can see. These are dash 10 lines that go from the oil pan uh, to our remote mount oil filter. This guy here. And, uh, and then back into the pan, and this is for just oil filtration. So it's out of the pump, through the filter, and then back into the block uh, to feed all the main galleys. Uh, the first go around was my bad. I had only finger tightened one of those, so it sprayed quite a bit of oil. Uh, the second go around, um, I actually found a line failure, um, <clears throat> which was a... Uh, 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 I don't know if it was a tear or a, a split in the uh, PTFE, but it got uh, crimped when I was putting it in the car and pulling it around the chassis, and that's all she wrote. And uh, it was a line puncture, spit a bunch of oil out, and had to get that taken care of. Um, another battle was the steam lines up in here at this T. Um, I, the fittings I ordered were a dash four instead of a dash three. And so um, that was leaking. Eventually I got that sorted by putting a quarter inch hose on and getting that put on to the correct locations. Uh, I still have to do uh, an oil tank vent, uh, either to a vent can or uh, vent it to the block, but I'm waiting on a dash 10 to dash eight adapter for the hose. Oh, uh, and then um, I still got to mount the um, ARE dry sump vent up on the bulkhead, which I might have enough time to do before the dyno. Uh, while I was checking, the oil in the tank dropped uh, 
one of the fittings and one of my tools down in the pan and where it's basically unrecoverable. So I'm gonna tape up the holes in the bottom of the pan just so the tool doesn't fall out. Try to find a grabber tool that I can reach it. Uh, and lastly, uh, the tune. The tune has been a battle. It seems to be running uh, pig rich. It doesn't want to idle, so it's been super difficult to try and get this thing through uh, some initial heat cycles before the dyno day. I managed to get it up to about 165 degrees for uh, coolant, oil a little bit less than that because they kind of warm up together. Uh, and it's still not hot enough to get the fans to kick on. So the, uh, at least the, the main oil cooler, the oil to water cooler is doing its job. Uh, so we'll see if it continues to do so on the dyno. Um, the wrap itself still hasn't baked off yet. It's still cooking. Uh, and then you can see little bits of harness that are just tied up here and there. Things that still need to be terminated that are just along for the ride for the moment. Stuff like this. And it's okay sitting there. It's just the circuits aren't in use. Uh, got our fire system in. All our lines plumbed and our nozzles set. Uh, again, I mentioned before, I had a fire system in the car previously. Uh, this time, I've more, um, well, better aimed the nozzles, I should say, towards areas where the fire was most likely to be, like at the fuel tank and the headers. And that's kind of it for the moment. It's just been lots of little battles. Doing all the hoses, my hands are just gnarly and cut up and I've got bruises on my arms from wrestling the transmission. I have to say uh, a huge thanks and a big shout out to uh, Kuiper and Doe and uh, especially Sean who's been giving up nights and weekends uh, uh, to come and help. Um, all of them have been uh, a huge help uh, in, in this kind of final push to get the car ready for the dyno. And once we get past the dyno, then I have about a week for a, a breather to make the car pretty, to finish the interior, to wrap up the wiring and make it uh, track worthy um, and make it street worthy. Um, Cause I still haven't driven it except for a little bit of back and forth in and out of the uh, garage. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of put some thoughts down and uh, sort of apologize for kind of missing everything with video or at least a fair chunk of it for the final assembly just because you know it was just one one little thing after another but because of the 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 ferocious pace of the build in these past six seven days it all just kind of added up very very quickly and um, all the stress accumulates like a snowball all those other build channels out there i don't i don't see how you do it um it's just uh it's super rough. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I'm trying not to get burned out on the car. I, I really want to enjoy it. All the, the stress from trying to meet uh, this deadline is definitely adding up. So I think a, a couple of weekends stress-free post-build, uh, just relaxing and maybe doing some driving uh, is definitely in the cards. I'll try to get some video of the, the dyno We'll see what Jay has to say, see what magic he can work on the car. If I get some, I'll tack it on to the end here. But uh, yeah, wish me luck and uh, let's see how she does.